I've got Grego Gallagher here, also known as Kino Body. We have both been fans of walking at minimum 10,000 steps per day. And I wanted to kind of go back and forth and share some just different benefits, simply walking for fat loss. Here's what I'll say. One, if you want to get lean, nutrition has to be dialed. You cannot out-exercise a bad diet. Now, once you have nutrition dialed, walking can literally turn you into a fat burning machine. If you can just start walking more, you will get lean a lot faster. In fact, walking burns a moderate amount of calories. You're not gonna burn as much as running, but it doesn't increase your hunger. It doesn't deplete your recovery abilities. And so if you can just train yourself and just learn to just walk daily, I actually recommend 10,000 steps is a good starting point. 12,000 is really good. And 14 is I find when you really become that fat burning machine and just the fat melts off as long as you have your nutrition dialed. People think, oh, I gotta get 10,000 steps a day. It's gonna take all this time, 12,000. You can make walking very, very functional. You can either walk with a friend, you can take a work call, business call on the phone, you can listen to an audiobook, you can listen to a podcast, you'd be listening to us talking right now and walking. And so you almost want to program in, this is the most effortless way to, in, to induce fat loss. You want to program walking into your day so that you get 10 to 14,000 steps automatic effortless. When you're traveling, it's amazing to walk and explore a new city. I often, when I travel out, sometimes I'll even lose weight because I'll even do more steps because I'm exploring a really, really cool city. I'm walking with a friend. I'll even push the envelope even higher to like 16 to 18,000 steps a day. But our hunter-gatherer ancestors, on average, walked 16 to 17,000 steps a day. They were walking machines. And so the average American, again, like 5,000 steps a day. And so when you can increase that and get up to the 10 to 14,000 sweet spot, it's so much easier to, to lean down. I have all of the people that do my programs. I push, get in the short fast every day, getting the correct amount of nutrition, hitting your three key lifts. And then the, the really the fourth one is a walk. It was interesting because they found in the study that cities that were walkable had a 43% obesity rate, which is still very high. But compared to cities that were not walkable, they were between 53 and 60%, depending on where they were. That's just by simply creating an environment that encouraged walking. But additionally, they found there was a 30 to 50% less risk of diabetes in a walkable city. That's independent of obesity. So just because people were encouraged to move more, they were sucking up blood glucose better into their cells so their blood sugar was lower. And just to have some fun with this, because I know you're big on the testosterone side, walking, I can't remember the study right offhand, but we can put it- I think I've seen this in one, post. Yeah. It was like, yeah, if you walk more than 8,000 steps, it was like the risk of hypogonadism, like you're basically just having super low testosterone, was almost like nil compared to people that walked less than 4,000. Then you've got the whole, like Huberman talks about the skin brain gonadal axis. So if you're out in the sun, that's good for testosterone production. So, hey, what do you know? Go out for a walk in the sun. I actually think it's not non-negotiable. Everyone should be walking. The bare minimum, let's say you're doing a lot of training, is get 8,000 steps a day. But I found the 12 to 14,000 is awesome. And with training, there's a cost. So doing a hard running workout, there's a recovery cost. You know, there could be that when you're lifting heavy and then you're doing a lot of running, being pulled in two directions, gaining muscle, staying more slim. But with running and a lot of cardio workouts, you're going to deplete some willpower. It, especially for someone that's not used to doing running, it's going to take some willpower, it's also gonna stimulate your hunger response. Some people are more sensitive to that. Some people don't find it. It's more individual. But for me, if I'm doing like hard cardio workouts, I get hungry. Now what happens? So you don't want to look at exercise in a vacuum. Some people look at exercise in a vacuum. Oh, I burn 800 calories. I burn a thousand calories. I burn whatever it is. And then all of a sudden their appetite's way higher. So they end up eating more. So what's the actual net benefit? If you burn 800 calories, but then your appetite is increased 500, it's only a 300 calorie net benefit. And so either it doesn't increase your appetite at all, or in some cases, when you're someone that's staying in, you're snacking, you're getting cravings, it can actually reduce the hunger and the cravings because you're getting outside, you're doing something, you're not thinking about food. And so walking actually, I find, has a greater net benefit for inducing calorie deficit than doing a lot of running where you're gonna have an increase in hunger. If you look at like an athlete's appetite, athletes are known for just being able to eat so much because they're burning and they're still in the appetite. So walking, I find, is literally a secret weapon and the really the key is to turn yourself into like a walking machine. There's a huge benefit beyond simply improving your health and burning calories and making it easier to get lean. Besides all that, there's huge benefit for creativity, for mood, for socializing, for ideas. I actually have to, like I have to walk. I see a massive, massive difference, you know? It's also super scalable and yeah. like, 
There's so yeah. many ways that you can make it harder if you do need to level it up with minimal equipment. I can't remember the study, but I mean, we could pull it, but it's simply changing the terrain you walk on. It changes the amount of calories quite significantly depending on what it is. But a perfect example is walking in sand, right? Right. So it's like everybody knows that walking in sand torches you, like it's hard, mm -hmm. like calves are burning and everything. So there's always ways to scale it. Yeah, one of the things I'll do is I'll walk and then if I see a nice hill, I'll turn around and I'll walk up the hill backwards. Go. And it's good for your knees and stuff. So I'll mix in a little bit of backwards walking here and there. I like the idea of carrying a three-year-old, if you got a daughter or a son. I just think it's absolutely, it makes such a big difference. Now to give someone some concrete numbers, what I've seen, you burn about 10 calories per kilometer per kilo. So let's say you're walking 10 kilometers, about six miles, and you weigh 176 pounds, so 80 kilos. You, you burn 800 calories, and that's walking about six miles, 10 kilometers, and that might be more like 12,000 steps or so. That's 800 calories. If you're already doing some day-to-day -day walking and then you add an extra walk in, it might just be like 60 to 90 minutes of a brisk walk embedded into your day because you're already getting a certain amount of steps every day just by walking in and out, so. It's low uh, low oxidative stress too, right? Yeah. Like you think of 800 calories, but that 800 calories is burned almost entirely from fat because it's a low intensity beta oxidation movement. So that is a no brainer. Would you rather burn 800 calories from fat or 400 calories from fat and 400 calories from carbohydrates? or glycogen. I mean, they all have their benefits. Calories at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to calories in, calories out. But if you're able to preserve some muscle and burn more of that from fat, that just makes a ton of sense. Let's wrap up with ways that people yeah. can get more steps in without really realizing it. You know, like one of the quick, easy ones, park further away from the entrance of a store, right? Like mm -hmm. people don't realize how much that adds up real quick. Like if you're parking on a Target and you're parking at the edge of the parking lot compared to trying to find the closest spot, that you literally might have just gotten yourself a thousand steps round trip. I haven't done this, but I know a lot of my uh, clients and stuff, they'll buy a walking desk mm -hmm. and they'll have the walking desk. I haven't done it, but like they'll crush steps super easily. The one thing I recommend doing, write down pen to paper or you can write it down on your phone when you're gonna get in that walk every day. I schedule my workouts when I'm gonna train, but I also schedule my walks. Okay, you know what? Two o'clock, I'm gonna go for a walk. Maybe you have a lunch break. Every opportunity you have, go outside, get a walk. So if you're in an office and you got a lunch break or a little break, go for a 15 minute walk before or after dinner. Go for a little walk. Maybe it's eight o'clock and you're calling your friends. Instead of sitting down, walk in a circle. I've traveled and I fly a lot. So sometimes I'm, I'm in an airport, I'm checked in, I'm at my gate, we're not boarding for 45 minutes and I'll walk the airport. I've tested this time and time again. And granted, as a business owner, I can be a little bit more like flexible with this, but like people schedule a Zoom call. You don't need to see my face. You know what? Like, mm -hmm. I know it's a Zoom and I know everyone wants to see everybody, but we don't need to do that. So video is off, you're on my phone and you're in my pocket and I'm talking to you and we're doing the Zoom call while I'm walking. And that way, try it out. You've got Zoom calls scheduled, or if you have the ability to schedule your own Zoom calls, schedule them in a time when it's convenient for you to go for a walk. So I try to schedule calls. Now it's one of these things where I do call blocks, right? So if I'm doing calls, I have them consolidated at a specific time when I know it's gonna be a convenient time for me to just go out for like a two hour walk. And it's funny because now it's made it more fun. I used to dread having to have calls. I'm just like, I don't wanna do this. And now I'm like, oh, I look forward to this. It's my time to go out in the sunshine and go for a walk. So that's kind of the main thing with walking. You wanna hit two birds, one stone. Either you do a work call, you, have a, you socialize with a friend, you learn, and if you do you know, any of those three, then you're hitting two birds, one stone. I have found I was never a theme park person, and I'm mm -hmm. still not particularly, like, don't really care about the theme park itself, but since having kids, going to Disneyland or Disney World, I will knock out sometimes 30,000 steps. Jesus. You know, and it's like, I think my record, my record is like 29,000 steps at Disney World one day. Oh. And it was like, so now my wife and I kind of joke, it's like, hey, you know, we're, uh, kids want to go to Disneyland. All right, we'll go to Disneyland because we live in LA, so it's close. Shoot, all right, well, at least we're going to get our like 20,000. Like, we end up coming, like most people go to like Disneyland and they might just eat funnel cakes and eat all this junk. Mm -hmm. We come back leaner. Literally, healthier, literally. Because literally. we've just been walking all Yeah, day. and it's very hard. If you're getting 30,000 steps in, it's very hard to eat, especially if you're doing a short fast and eating like filling foods. It's very hard to like, to even get to maintenance. Totally. You're burning so much, you're gonna kind of create a very big deficit. Yeah. And you know what, someone that, and, and it's very powerful, let's say someone's got 50 pounds to lose. I know at one point you probably had close to 100 pounds or something yeah. to lose. If you're 50 pounds 
overweight, you do not need to run. And that's also a lot of stress on the knees. The amount of calories you are gonna burn walking is gonna be a very high amount. It's true. Um, because the, the heavier you are, the more you're moving, the more calories you're burning. So, so you know, if, I, if I'm 180, 175, 180, if I was 250 and I did 10,000 steps, I'd be burning way more. So as a bigger person with weight to lose, you can get lean so easily with walking. You don't need to put the, the vest on. I mean, but that's something cool that I might try on is throw on. Where can everyone find you, man? Yep, so I'm active every day on Instagram at Grego Gallagher, as well my website with where I have all my programs, supplements is kinobody.com, K-I-N-O body.com. Right on, my man. Well, thanks, bro. All right. Everyone's gonna be walking right now. They're gonna be- <laughs> Exactly, I hope they're walking while they're walking. watching this.